Good afternoon and welcome to today's virtual press event. I'm Colleen Carr, Director of the National Action Alliance for Suicide Prevention Secretariat at the Education Development Center. I wanna thank all the reporters who are joining us for today's event. We know this is a very busy time for all of you and appreciate you prioritizing this important topic. I'd also like to thank the many partners, supporters and advocates who might be joining us as well. And I'd like to thank the Education Development Center for making today's event possible. The Education Development Center is the home of the National Suicide Prevention Resource Center, the Zero Suicide Institute, and the National Action Alliance for Suicide Prevention. 10 years ago today at the National Press Club, where we're virtually holding today's event, we announced the formation of the country's first and only public-private partnership for suicide prevention, officially establishing the National Action Alliance for Suicide Prevention. Over the past decade, we've seen diverse industries and sector leaders from defense, entertainment, faith, healthcare, news media, public safety, sport, and technology and others collectively working together to make suicide prevention a national priority. The landscape of suicide prevention in this country looks different than it did 10 years ago. While great strides have been made, the suicide rate continues to increase and the COVID-19 pandemic is causing emotional distress and financial instability among millions of Americans, particularly communities of color that already face structural barriers to health and economic well-being. These developments create a new sense of urgency to lead efforts that will buffer the effects of these emerging risks and increase resiliency for all Americans. While we don't know what the true impact of the pandemic will be on the nation's collective mental health, we do know that many Americans are struggling and this watershed moment provides a unique opportunity for the nation to emerge with lasting systems and policy change that can ensure everyone has the access to the care, support and services they need where and when they need them. And that's why the Action Alliance recently launched the Mental Health and Suicide Prevention National Response to COVID-19 to collectively address Critical, critical gaps in our country's mental health and suicide prevention system and change the way we talk about and address these issues as a country. You'll be hearing more about the national response in weeks to come, but the time to act is now. And thanks to the Action Alliance, hundreds of diverse partners from the public and private sector coming together, we're seeing change. 10 years ago, suicide wasn't talked about. And over the past decade, we see greater news stories about suicide prevention. And we're seeing greater entertainment storylines featuring characters that seek help in their moment of crisis and go on to live. But with rates of suicide continuing to rise in the US, more work is needed to change our cultural understanding and perceptions around this issue. Suicide and suicide prevention should be talked about openly, honestly, and safely, just like we talk about other leading public health issues. And because we know the way we talk about suicide can help to promote hope and help seeking, the Action Alliance has made changing the conversation a key priority of its work. So before I introduce our first speaker on today's call, I'd like to remind the reporters that are joining us on the webcast today that they can use the ask a question feature at any time and we'll address those during the Q&A portion of today's event. I'd now like to turn to one of our esteemed Action Alliance Executive Committee members, Mark Weber, who serves as the Deputy Assistant Secretary for Public Affairs within the US Department of Health and Human Services. In addition, Mark serves as the public sector lead of the Action Alliance's Change in the Conversation Priority Work. Mark, the floor is yours. All right, thank you, Colleen. And as Colleen mentioned, you know, the Action Alliance serves as the nation's public-private partnership for suicide prevention, and it brings together influential leaders from across the country to address suicide. I'm honored to serve as one of the executive committee members of the Action Alliance, helping to guide its work, particularly around changing the conversation priority er effort. A key goal of the Action Alliance's national strategy for suicide prevention, the nation's framework for suicide prevention, is focused on re promoting responsible media reporting of suicide and accurate portrayals of suicide and mental illness through the entertainment industry. We know that in order to be, in order to effectively change the conversation, news and entertainment media play a key role. 
which is why I'm excited for you to hear shortly from two private sector partners looking to transform the way journalists report on suicide and how content creators depict mental health and suicide in entertainment programming. Before, I, before we go into that, I'd like to show you a brief video that actually speaks to the, our work in this particular area. While we often talk openly and compassionately about leading health issues like heart disease and cancer, there is one public health issue affecting millions of Americans each year that, too often, we have a hard time talking about. Suicide. And while suicide is a difficult and complex subject, it is not a hopeless one. The National Action Alliance for Suicide Prevention, the nation's public-private partnership, is committed to changing the conversation about suicide and suicide prevention to one of hope, help-seeking, and resiliency. Research shows that how suicide is reported on, portrayed, and talked about shapes the perceptions and beliefs about the issue and the actions individuals take to help themselves and others. That's why we are working directly with the news media, entertainment industry, and other public messengers to ensure that public-facing content fosters positive dialogue, counters shame and prejudice, and supports prevention efforts. The Action Alliance works with the news media sector to inform reporting on suicide prevention and to encourage the adoption of evidence-based best practices that can reduce stigma and promote hope. The Action Alliance works closely with the entertainment industry to craft more balanced and authentic storylines that highlight survival, hope, and healing. The Action Alliance works with suicide prevention messengers to develop public-facing messages that are strategic, safe, positive, and follow relevant guidelines and best practices. How we talk about suicide matters. Now is the time for us to come together as a nation to offer hope, encourage help-seeking, and promote resiliency. We all have a role to play. Whether you're a journalist, a content creator, or a suicide prevention messenger, you can promote messages of hope and encourage actions that can save lives. Please join us in changing the conversation about suicide and strengthening our nation's dialogue about suicide prevention. To learn more, visit theactionalliance.org slash messaging. Thank you. And, and really our intention in partnering with the media, like many of you have joined us today, is to help you tell stories and educate the public, not only about suicide, but more importantly about suicide prevention in ways that encourage help-seeking behavior for those in need. You know, you know best. Words and depictions have power to heal or harm. Over the past 10 years, we've seen a change in the way journalists report on suicide and suicide prevention, and we thank you for your continued coverage of this critical public health issue. And we want you to know we're here to be your ally and to support the great work you do. Yeah, thank you very much for all you've done, and we continue to look forward to working with you. And now I'd like to turn it back to Colleen to, to continue on with our conference here. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. The Action Alliance is so grateful for your leadership and HHS's continued commitment to this important issue. Now I'd like to take a few minutes before we introduce our next two panelists to highlight some findings from a recent public perception survey that was conducted on behalf of the Action Alliance in collaboration with the Education Development Center, the Suicide Prevention Resource Center, and the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. The online survey conducted in July 2020 by Harris Poll assessed the perceptions of over 2,000 U.S. adults aged 18 and older. The survey builds upon similar surveys that were conducted in 2015 and 2018. The majority of those surveyed, 81%, say that as a result of the pandemic, it's more important than ever to make suicide prevention a national priority. And 52% of American adults reported being more open to talking about mental health as a result of COVID-19. These findings reinforce the fact that the American people are ready for the nation to take collective action now to mitigate the short-term impacts and prevent any long-term negative mental health or suicide-related consequences of the pandemic. 
We need both traditional and non-traditional partners from the public and private sectors to heed this call to action and make suicide prevention a priority. In addition, the survey found that 86% of respondents believe the media have a role to play in mental health and suicide prevention. More than 40% believe the media should help educate people about the potential mental health treatment options in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, educate people about the potential mental health risks as a result of COVID-19, share tips and tools for coping and managing mental health and suicide challenges, and provide information on resources for mental health and suicide prevention. And more than 30% reported believing that media should help reduce the stigma often associated with mental health and suicide, share real stories about people's experiences with mental health and suicide prevention, and promote social programs that can help address mental health and suicidal challenges, such as healthcare, food banks, housing assistance, and unemployment assistance as well as highlight the importance of investing in mental health and suicide prevention as part of our response. Given these findings, we need the media to recognize the important role that they play in suicide prevention and make a commitment to ensuring they're telling authentic and accurate stories, especially now in the wake of the pandemic, as we're seeing more people reporting increased levels of stress, anxiety, depression, trauma, and thoughts of suicide. More information about this new public perception poll is available at our website, theactionalliance.org. And in addition to these new survey findings, we also know from research that how news media reports on suicide and how the entertainment media portray suicide can either promote hope and help seeking or increase hopelessness and the, increase the risk of contagion. That's why the Action Alliance works to engage news and entertainment media to promote best practices and inform stories about suicide and suicide prevention. And that's also why we're excited to share with you today some innovative new tools that have been developed by Action Alliance partners that have the power to change behaviors, influence perceptions, and save lives. So next up, I'd like to introduce Jennifer Redman. Chief Data Evangelist with Cisco to share with you more about a new tool they've developed for news media and other content creators and storytellers to, to develop safe, accurate, and authentic stories about suicide and suicide prevention that follow evidence-based practices. Jennifer? Thank you so much, Colleen. The work I'm sharing with you today isn't the story of a faceless corporation. It's a story of people over 100 individuals, including Cisco's Chief Data Officer, Shanti Ayer, and Head of Data Science, Sanjeev Patel, who've chosen to offer their time and energy to saving lives. It's a story of a company culture that fosters giving back to the causes which matter most to its employees. Suicide prevention became my cause on August 6, 2015, when I lost one of my closest friends, Erica, to suicide. She was 29 years old, and this past Saturday would have been her 35th birthday. Last year, when I started Cisco's data science and artificial intelligence for suicide prevention effort with our Vancouver AI lab and its leader, Dr. Annie Ying, I couldn't have imagined that we'd be here today. In collaboration with Dr. Dan Reidenberg, whose life's work not only inspired this effort, but who became our partner in good, we've developed a tool to aid in suicide prevention. It's important to distinguish that Dr. Dan is a psychologist and researcher behind what I'm sharing with you. We at Cisco are the technologists. Through Dr. Dan's website, reportingonsuicide.org, we learned about the harm each of us may inadvertently cause when we adhere to today's communication norms surrounding suicide, the most common being the phrase committed suicide. Although we recognize that people commit crimes and sins, not illnesses, we haven't changed our taxonomy accordingly. And when a celebrity dies by suicide, this phrase and other communication norms lead to a 13% increase in national suicide rates. We don't see the reporting on suicide guidelines as a resource solely for news media. We see it as a guide for how we as human beings can destigmatize mental illness and reduce death by suicide through the power of words, whether spoken in the news, posted on social media, and every other way we communicate. I felt when we got started and still feel that Cisco, the Cisco team can contribute the most to this cause by playing to our strengths as technologists. And as such, we've taken a data science slash machine learning approach. Our initial analysis of approximately a thousand articles on suicide um, found that the reporting on suicide guideline adoption rate is only 3% today. 
working with Dr. Dan, we set a goal to increase that 3% adoption rate through technology, which makes it easy to follow the guidelines in the same way that spell checkers make it easy to avoid misspelling words. This tool, which is available to everyone at reportingonsuicide.cisco.com, is what we refer to as a minimum viable product or a public beta. The reason I'm not sharing a finished product is that we need your help, the media's help to finish it. Reportingonsuicide.cisco.com functions similarly to a grammar checker, but instead of looking for grammatical errors, it checks your text against the reporting on suicide guidelines. I didn't know a year ago where we'd be today, and I can't imagine where we could be a year from now with your help. I'm asking you, the media, to help us save lives by telling us how we can increase the reporting on suicide guideline adoption rate. I'm asking you to visit reportingonsuicide.cisco.com to explore it and to tell us what changes would make a difference. For example, you may tell us that you want the tools functionality integrated into your content management system instead of as a standalone website. You may tell us a completely different approach is needed to help people understand suicide's contagion effect and that disclosing a person's suicide method leads to an increase in suicides disproportionately by the same method. What I'm hoping you won't tell us is nothing. Who I am, who we, the Cisco Data Science and Artificial Intelligence for Suicide Prevention team members are, our technologists are good. And it's through tech that we aspire to contribute to suicide prevention, but we can't do it without you. And back to you, Colleen. Thank you, Jim. We're, see, we're really thrilled to see how Cisco is leveraging its expertise in the technology space to help address a suicide prevention need around advancing the reporting on um, best practices. Next up, I'd like to introduce Ms. Nipur Agarwal, who serves as the Vice President for Social Impact for Viacom CBS's Entertainment and Youth Group. She also serves as an Executive Committee member for the Action Alliance and as a Steering Committee member for the Action Alliance's National Response Initiative. Nipur is here to talk a bit about the active role Viacom CBS is playing in mental health promotion and suicide prevention. Nipur? Thank you for the kind introduction, Colleen. And thanks to the Action Alliance for hosting this important event and inviting me to participate. I started my journey of leveraging media for social impact 13 years ago. And the very first initiative I led was MTV's campaign on mental health, which had recently been launched in partnership with the Jed Foundation. Working on that campaign, I witnessed the power of storytelling firsthand. Artists like Mary J. Blige, Demi Lovato, and Mac Lamour courageously opened up about their emotional struggles alongside brave young people from across the country. Those real stories ultimately helped break stigma, they encouraged help seeking, and they fundamentally changed the national conversation about mental health. Seeing the impact we could have through storytelling, it was clear we had to think even bigger and tap our greatest asset, our shows. As storylines about emotional health surfaced in our content, we partnered closely with experts to ensure those storylines were imparting a positive message while also connecting viewers to resources. In the last year alone, we integrated major mental health storylines in top MTV and VH1 shows from Teen Mom and Floribama Shore to Black Ink Crew and Love and Hip Hop. These storylines not only depicted the topic in an organic way, but also resonated deeply with audiences, driving over 300,000 viewers to seek resources and help. This type of high impact show integration work is happening across the industry with the support of many leading expert organizations. And while the commitment to this work is inspiring, there's still a long way to go. A study published by the Annenberg Inclusion Initiative last year found that only 7% of scripted TV characters experienced a mental health condition compared to nearly 19% of the general population. And when mental health conditions were represented, the portrayals often perpetuated stigma and very rarely depicted help seeking. So how do we expand mental health representation and ensure it's leading to positive impact? To answer that question, we spent the last year examining research, learning from leading experts, talking to industry partners, and studying mental health representation within our own content through a close partnership with the Innenberg Inclusion Initiative. In doing so, we not only uncovered missed opportunities in our own shows, we also identified three key opportunities for innovation across the industry. First, we saw an opportunity for stronger coordination and alignment across the expert and entertainment communities. Second, we saw an opportunity to shift to a more proactive approach that is focused as much on inspiring more mental health storytelling as it is on getting the existing storylines right. 
And third, we saw a big opportunity to expand storytelling beyond crisis moments to reflect the wide range of experiences viewers have with their own mental health. So with these opportunities in mind and with leadership from the Annenberg Inclusion Initiative and the Action Alliance, over a dozen top experts and organizations have joined forces to develop a mental health media guide that brings together best practices from across the field in a comprehensive way for the first time ever. This interactive guide will offer evidence-based recommendations that can be applied throughout the life cycle of a piece of content with an eye towards addressing the needs of diverse audiences and elevating storytelling white spaces. These recommendations focus not only on crisis and suicide prevention, but also highlight opportunities to depict mental health as a continuum with a greater emphasis on holistic narratives of hope, resilience, and healthy coping. The Viacom CBS Entertainment and Youth Group is excited to be piloting this media guide internally over the coming months, particularly given the added urgency of the current national context that Colleen spoke of earlier. But we know we can't address the mental health crisis alone. So in that spirit, we are inviting industry partners to join us in shaping the media guide as we prepare for its public release later this year. It's critical that the guide speaks to the needs of all content creators and operates as a living and breathing resource that adapts as the issue evolves, as new research emerges, and as new partners bring their unique insights to bear. But perhaps most importantly, we hope the media guide serves as a point of unification across sectors so that we can be more connected, more collaborative, and more proactive as we all try to rise to the mental health challenges our society is facing today. With that, I'd like to thank the Action Alliance for their leadership on this effort and the opportunity to share more about our collective vision to revolutionize mental health representation and entertainment. We hope more organizations across sectors will join us. Thank you. Thank you, Nippur. Viacom CBS's leadership and commitment has been so valuable and we're really excited to see the impact the media guide can have on the broader entertainment sector moving forward. So really thank you for your leadership and, and work on this. So we've just featured uh, two examples of, of partners. Um, there's so many extraordinarily, extraordinary examples of diverse sector leaders stepping up to play a role in addressing the 10th leading cause of death in the US. Over the past decade, what we've come to understand is that we can't just treat our way out of this problem. It's not just what we do in the clinical setting, although that matters. It's also what happens outside of a clinical setting in our communities and in our culture. That's why the Action Alliance has partnered with organizations like Cisco and Viacom CBS and many others to help ensure we're reaching people not only in health systems, but also where they work, where they live, so today's event is really for you, the press. Um, so we're going to stop here and um, we'd like to spend the remainder of today's event answering your questions, whether it is in response to um, the, the tool from Cisco that Jennifer was talking about or the entertainment guide from Viacom CBS and partners that Nippur was talking about. I know um, some of you uh, may have sent in questions ahead of today's event, but first we'd like to open up uh, an opportunity to reporters who are with us live today to submit your questions via the ask a question feature. And when you do so, please identify your name, your news outlet and your question. And we will um, answer those as they come in. So to get us started, um, Mark, I'm gonna direct a question to you. Um, if you could talk a little bit more about why changing the conversation is a core priority of the action line. Um, I think it's really important uh, to change the way we, we talk about suicide in this country, the way that um, it is described in reporting the way that is portrayed in the entertainment industry. What we really wanna support is we want to support reporters covering news stories. And, you know, and we wanna support the creative community in a way that is effective and compelling storytelling. And we wanna, and, but we wanna do this in a way that's in partnership to help you, you know, use the power you have. You know, more Americans get I hate admitting this, but 
more Americans get their health information from television and news stories than they do from the Department of Health and Human Services. And, you know, it's like, that's where they engage. That's, that's where they hear. That's where they, you know, go and then talk to their friends about the latest episode of, you know, X show. And so over the years, I think Jennifer talked about, you know, Dr. Dan, you know, we had developed an incredibly robust data, data set about how powerful reporting is and how powerful the entertainment is in helping to people to seek help versus to feel despair and, and you know, carry on with their life without getting, getting help or, or worse. So changing the conversation, you know, working with those influencers, news media, entertainment industry, and helping the American public in general not be afraid to ask the question, are you okay? Is there something, something I can do? Can we talk? You know, let me connect you with help so that, so that you can, you know, talk to someone who can help you work through your issues and, and move on with life. So, so that's why I think the changing the conversation component of the Action Alliance is critically important. And, you know, I, you know, it, it's one of the, the main pillars I always say, you know, having communications at the beginning of a process versus at the end uh, is, is also one of the strengths of, of the Action Alliance all the other initiatives that are going on. But anyway, that, that, that's sort of the, uh, in a nutshell, I go into each of these areas a lot more, but, uh, but again, just it's recognizing, and, and you know it, the power, the words you use have on influencing people in the way they believe and behave and act. Great, thank you, Mark. I have a question for Jennifer next. Um, I think you touched on this briefly, but can you talk a little bit more about how Cisco plans on getting the news media tool into the hands of reporters and newsrooms across the country? Great question, Colleen. So the, the tool itself is available to everyone right now. Um, anyone can go to reportingonsuicide.cisco.com, type in text and click the, the verify button to get input um, on, on what Get the uh, sorry, <laughs> the um, the verification based on on the reporting on suicide guidelines. What we're asking for the various media outlets to do is to reach out directly to us. And if you could through uh, through Action Alliance, we have, as I said, over 100 volunteers who are ready and waiting to partner with various media outlets to listen to your feedback. As I mentioned, we we don't know what. Um, what the future state of this tool should look like. And we know that it's not perfect today, but what we would like is for you to tell us what it should be. And keeping in mind that, you know, as technologists, we can offer a variety of options, right? We can, we can have it work on the back end versus being a front end standalone tool. We can make it more mobile friendly. Um, there are so many different ways we can integrate, but we, we don't know what's effective. So please reach out to the Action Alliance and um, look forward to, to setting all of you up, I hope, with, uh, with someone on our team so they can they can work with you and listen to your needs and we can develop the tool together. Great, thank you. And I think that that really connects nicely to what Mark was saying that this is really, you know, tools and partnerships so we can help media do do what they do best. Um, so Nepore, the next question is gonna to come to you. Um, if you can talk a little bit more about the implementation plan for Viacom CBS's media guide and a little bit about what the reception has been from others in the industry. Sure, so um, as I mentioned, we are beginning to pilot the media guide internally um, this month and our plan to implement it is through interactive workshops. Uh, we've had a model that we've used in the past where we'll um, develop interactive spaces for our creators to come together with experts and not only hear the guidelines and the recommendations, which obviously is very critical, but then really create a, a structured space to ideate and brainstorm and hopefully inspire uh, new storyline ideas. Uh, so that is kind of our hope with the media guide is really to, to not only share the recommendations and all the content, it will ultimately be accessible to anyone and live on an interactive site, but we really wanna also uh, use it as an opportunity to spark new thoughts um, and really elevate storytelling white spaces. So. Uh, more to come on the website. Like I said, it will launch later this year in December as an interactive 
tool that's available to anyone and hopefully everyone who wants to use it. Um, in terms of the reception this far, um, you know, I would just say it's maybe unsurprising, but the, the kind of challenges that we saw at Viacom where there was, you know, a bit of fragmentation and so many different partners doing great work, but maybe not all uh, aligning and coordinating as well as um, could be. Um, that kind of sentiment we found shared, uh, you know, pretty widely across the, the board. And so we really see the media guide as a way to address this need and really just make it easy for people in the creative community to find the recommendations that are evidence-based in one place across topics without having to go to a number of different sources. So, so we're really excited and optimistic that, um, you know, across our industry, people will hopefully find it much easier to, to do more and better mental health storytelling. Great, thank you. I now have a question that I'm gonna direct to all, all three of you. Um, so maybe Mark, I'll start with you and then go Jennifer and Nippur if that works. Um, can you talk a little bit about how has COVID-19 changed the role of news media and entertainment in suicide prevention? or changed or amplified the role of news media and entertainment? Well, um, you know, with COVID-19, sort of, again, applying some of the same principles, uh, you know, again, government produces health information, but that's not always the place that people go to find their health information. And so by creating alliances with the entertainment industry, by you know working with the news media and and you know explaining what is going on so that we can communicate to the public around COVID-19 and again it, it's a little bit like uh, I'll say like we're, we don't want to tell the news media what to do we want to provide tools we don't want to tell the public what we want want them to do we want to help them make informed choices and and also recognizing you know, the consequences of those choices as well. And, and, and I would say in relationship to suicide prevention, that the data you all released last week just heightens the, the sensitivity, the importance, the urgency, because, you know, a lot of us are going to do fine. We're going to get through this. We're resilient people. We're a resilient population, but not everybody is. And this, this, the COVID-19 might be the the thing that just puts a family over the edge and or an individual, you know, it just the one more pile of onto the despair. And so, so the, again, the survey data you released last week just, you know, tells us the urgency, the interconnectedness and why, you know, people feel that, you know, there is a need for that information so that we can make informed decisions and get people connected to help who need it. Right. Thanks, mm -hmm. Jennifer. Yes, so be transparent, that isn't my area of expertise, but what I can say that we've seen at Cisco from a technology perspective is that so much more of our lives have gone virtual, right? This press conference is a good example. Um, school's gone virtual, the way we connect with others because we can't be within six feet. Um, so what we've seen is there's such a heightened importance on what people post on social media, what's written, what it is that we can the way that we communicate to each other via these, these new norms. And you know, COVID-19 has driven a lot of digital transformation in areas that, that um, it hasn't been moving as quickly up to this point. And so I think we've all been you know, kind of uh, working to keep up with the way that it's changed our everyday lives. But in terms of suicide prevention, I think it's really heightened the importance of making sure that we're still connecting um, as much as we were and having that that human to human contact, and as opposed to feeling like we're isolated. Yeah, and I'll just add to what um, others have shared, and, and to echo Mark. I think one is just it's created more urgency than ever um, to ensure we're aligned and coordinated, and are all working from a shared set of best practices. Um, and secondly, it's you know, made us think a lot about how we address the specific impacts of COVID-19 on mental health within the media guide recommendation. So ensuring we have recommendations around things like trauma and feelings of isolation and a lot of the other 
issues that this current pandemic has really surfaced um, and then partnering with creatives to ensure those themes are, are ones that are, are being woven into storylines. So that's absolutely front of mind for all of us and really just heightens the need to, to get, these, get these resources in front of creatives as quickly as we can. Great, thank you. I think that makes a lot of sense. That sense of urgency is something I think we're all feeling and the data that's coming in is, is certainly reinforcing that, that we need to be acting in now to support people who are struggling and prevent long-term impacts. So one of the things um, we touched on in the beginning was really the role of public and private sector coming together. And I think this, you all on the panel is a great example of that. And would love to get your thoughts on, you know, I think what you shared today around these specific tools that Cisco and Viacom CBS are developing and, and the public sector as well. Can you say a little bit more about how engaging in suicide prevention um, can really be strengthened by having new partners at the table like technologists, um, like Jennifer or entertainment um, experts like Nepore. Um, you know, how, do, how does that contribute to a strengthened national suicide prevention response? And Nepor, maybe I'll start with you this time, if that's okay. Sure, yeah. Um, I mean, I think each of us sitting in our sectors brings a unique set of skills and assets and expertise to the conversation. From our perspective, we're storytellers. We know how to connect with audiences, we know how to create content that resonates, that encourages things like help seeking um, and coping behaviors. Um, that's kind of what we know how to do best. So being able to collaborate with experts that uh, you know we've worked with through the Action Alliance and, and other partners to really infuse that capability with evidence-based research on what actually works in terms of reducing suicide and promoting mental health. Um, is really critical to the equation. I don't think any sector could do this work alone and we have to each bring our best assets and skills to bear uh, to solve what is a major national issue. So, you know, we're really grateful for um, organizations like the Action Alliance that facilitate those, um, those conversations and those collaborations because it truly is um, central to the work being successful. Great, and Jennifer, any thoughts from a technologist perspective and the role of technology companies. Absolutely, so I'd like to second Nepur's comments on uh, thanking the Action Alliance for bringing us together. I think that what we've seen is that each of these different sectors brings an incredible view of the art of the possible. For example, when we speak with psychologists or when Nepur and I speak, we have such different backgrounds and different views of what could happen in the next year, five year, 10 years, that I think we can really dream big together about what a world would look like if, if we truly had that compassion around mental health, if we had the resources in place, if we really you know, built for, for what we wish the world would be today. Um, so for me and for the, and like I said, it's over hundred Cisco team members. So I'm the one here, but um, it's really an amazing team of, of people who've really stepped up for what, as we all know, is a really hard topic, um, who can see in the art of the possible in the technologist space. And we love working with the people who can see the art of the possible in every other space. Then, Great point. Then, Mark, fine, I'll give you the, the final word of the day. Uh, wow, exciting. I'm, I'm going to go a little government nerdy, but uh, you know, it's like, one of, the, one of the awesome things about the Action Alliance is, you know, it brings together the public and private sector together around a plan and priorities. And so that, so that we aren't all reinventing the wheel, we all bring our part of the wheel together to make it go round, and then sort of agreeing on those priorities that, that we will focus energy and attention. And so, you know, and, and that, that's really how we ended up with the, the, the changing the conversation priority very much. It's like, who are the influencers? Who are the people we need to be talking with? The, you know, again, I, I think I've said it a few times that the power of the media to engage and influence the public and, and the entertainment industry. So, you know, what can we do as a nation? What can we do as the government, private sector to help you know, our fellow citizens who work in the entertainment industry and in the media be contributing members 
in, as part of the Action Alliance goal to ultimately realize a day where you know suicide doesn't exist in this country. So, so bringing us together around a plan and priorities, adjusting it as we need to. You know, we we've talked about you know suicide has continued to go up. So, you know, we need we need to look at what you know what are, what do we need to do different so that we can really start seeing those rates go down. And uh, and we welcome the entertainment industry and the the news media to be part of that uh, effort. Thank you, Mark. So with that, I'd love to thank all of you um, who've joined us for today to our panelists, Mark Weber, and Port Agarwal, Jennifer Redman. Thank you so much for bringing your perspectives and your expertise um, and, and the tools that you're building in your own sectors to us today. To the reporters, thank you for spending time with us today. And I hope you will um, really take what's been shared today and give us your feedback on these tools, help make them better. As, as Jennifer said, this is the first iteration. We want them these to be used and to be helpful to you. And so do provide that feedback. And we really appreciate your continued commitment to accurately and safely reporting on suicide um, during COVID and, and beyond. It's, you know, it's every day. Um, and, and following those best practices at reporting on suicide.org from the field that really, um, bring the best in research that we have to help you do your job. Um, I'd also like to thank the Action Alliance's many partners. Um, there's 250 partners of the Action Alliance from the public sector and from the private sector um, that really make this work possible. And while today we talked about changing the conversation, there's many more efforts underway to both transform health systems to be suicide safe and to transform communities as well. So please do go to the website to find out more about all of our priority initiatives that the Action Alliance is advancing as part of its work to advance the national strategy for suicide prevention. We know that it's going to take leaders from both sectors working together, sharing ideas and making those ideas better through collaboration to make suicide prevention a national priority and to save lives. And I'd like to thank the Education Development Center once again for making today's virtual press event possible and, and helping us bring this to you um, today. As a reminder, the Action Alliance is a resource to help connect you with subject matter experts to inform your coverage as you are reporting on suicide by connecting you with the experts in our network. Um, so please do rely on us. We're happy to make those connections and, and help you in that way. And in addition, the Action Alliance has recently launched National Response as part of uh, the Mental Health and Suicide Prevention Response to COVID-19, is committed to creating lasting cultural systems and policy change to ensure access to care and support and services that people need and deserve. And we really look forward to reaching out to you very soon with more information about the National Response and its priorities. So that will be coming very soon. And recognizing um, that today is the 10 year anniversary of the Action Alliance. And we have spent the last 10 years really building a strong and unified foundation for national suicide prevention, but there's so much more work to be done. And so for the next decade and beyond, we look forward to building upon that strong foundation and the momentum we've created to continue to engage new non-traditional partners while working with the 250 partners that have already come to the table. And so whether that's working with members of the news and entertainment media or other sectors, together we really do have the ability to move the nation's suicide prevention efforts forward and to shift our nation's culture around this critical public health issue. So thank you again for joining us for today's event and we hope you stay safe, stay healthy, and thank you for the work that you do.